We're starting the video with the cat in the frame. That's just the kind of day it's gonna be. Hi, it's Erin, welcome back. It's a little station repel haul kind of vibe today. Yes, I know there's been a lot of hauls lately. This is the last one for a while, I promise. I feel like I came back from my holiday and just set about replenishing stationery because I couldn't get packages for a while because I was away for five weeks and um, got a little, oh, sorry, I just got his tail with my hand. I may have been a little bit overzealous. This haul is still going up when it's going up because it's like time sensitive, okay? There's, there's some sales that you need to know about before they go away. But after this, I promise we're gonna do some stuff that's not hauls. I've got some decluttering, some stationary organizing content coming your way. Don't worry, I'm not just a haul channel now. It's, it's gonna be fine. <laughs> if you're not familiar with Stationery Pal, they are an online stationery store and they also sell some stuff that's not specifically necessarily stationery. We'll talk about that a bit later on. They are some of the most affordable stationery items that you can find on the internet. And this is my fourth time working with Stationery Pal, I think at this point. So thank you so much for Stationery Pal for being keen to make videos with me. Just so you know, the stuff in this box was sent to me in exchange for the video, so I didn't actually pay for it. Also, there will be links to everything in the description that I show you in this video. They are affiliate links, so if you make a purchase through those links or if you use my discount code, which we'll talk about soon, I will make a little bit of a commission, just so you know. But you don't have to, there's no pressure, but if you'd like to. This is Mitsu, by the way, I didn't introduce him. Oh, he, he knows when it's his moment and he's, I think he's leaving. Okay, bye. So the whole time sensitive factor here is that the month of April, we're celebrating Stationery Pal's fifth anniversary. Happy birthday, Stationery Pal. And in order to celebrate, they are doing all sorts of crazy deals on the site. There are some things that are like 50% off. There's a flash sale that they're running where every day on the website, a different product or a different list of products are slashed in price down to 99 US cents. So have a look at the calendar for the flash sale if you wanna know like which day you should make your most effective purchase. And we're talking some pretty big brands there too. Um, Muji, Kuretake, Zebra, Koyuko Plus, and so much more. The flash sale is running each day from the 1st to the 30th of April, 2023. The general anniversary sale is also running to the 30th of April. So if you're watching during that time, time to go shopping. And if you're not watching during that time, or even if you just wanna like get a little bit of extra savings in there, you can use my discount code Erin, E-R-I-N, to get 15% off your order. All that being said, let us open up the box and see what I got. I don't have like a huge number of things this time. I tried to be like a little bit restrained. The box is different every time. It's so crazy. They like do seasonal boxes, which is cool because you never quite know what it's gonna look like. And I really noticed with this one when I opened it up that they have scented the package. So when you open it up, you get this lovely little wafty burst of fragrance, which like is a very luxury touch for a discount stationery company. Similar to my last haul video, I had such a good time doing like a junk journaling spread that I thought it would be fun to do it again. So some stickers, some paper and some washi tapes and stuff that I'm gonna show you in my notebook and we'll make a couple of little junk journaly spreads. One is significantly better than the other, disclaimer. So let's start with the stuff that goes in a journal since this is a bullet journal centric channel because that's where I use all my stationery and then we'll come back and then we'll talk about the other stuff. Cool. <laughs> Jumping right into the first of my junk journaling spreads here. This one, we're gonna start with this pearl watercolor palette. I've had my eye on this for a while and it is frequently sold out, unfortunately, as it is at the time that I'm making this video as well. But if you keep an eye on it, catch it when it comes back into stock and be very speedy, you can grab one of these. The pans are really big. There's six colors in here. I'm not doing any mixing for this one. I'm just gonna use the colors straight as they are. I don't have any particular watercolor skill. I like just doing these kind of cloudy background things. So just dabbing some paint on the paper, adding some water. This is a 160 GSM notebook from Notebook Therapy. So it's not made for watercolor, but it does okay. I'm using blue and green for this one, and you can see when I hold it up to the light, it has this beautiful, slightly radiant, pearly kind of finish. It's also a little bit not quite dry. Next up is this set of 12 pastel, it calls itself wide washi tapes. I think they're a little bit wider than a standard washi tape, but I wouldn't call them super wide either. I often feel like when I'm using a patterned washi tape that I'd like to have just a solid color to offset it, so I thought these would be a good option for that. I'm using the very pale lavender and the acidy kind of pastel green as well. Now for some detail, we're gonna add a few of these leaf sticky notes. I would not use these to write on, I would just use them purely for decoration, which is how I'm gonna do it this time. There are a couple of flaws in the printing, which is a little bit annoying, but not super annoying, but it is on every single one of the leaves across the whole pad, so that's 
something to consider if that would bother you. It was only $1.67 though, so you know, and I'm just adding some extra glue tape so that it will stick in the parts that do not already have stick on them on the back. And of course, you know, I grabbed some floral stickers, didn't I? Because I always do. I got two sets. I have no idea what epiphyllums are, but they're very pretty. And I also got the tulip version of these. You can never have too many floral stickers. That is my approach to life. So starting with the epiphyllum stickers, I'm just making sure I put them in places that aren't completely white space. I want to layer them a little bit over washi or a little bit over some paint or a combination of a couple of things. This has been a super minimal effort spread so far and look how good it's looking. I love it when it's this easy. I'm kind of going a bit sparingly on my stickers because I do actually want to use them in my own journal too. So I don't want to use too many to demonstrate what they look like. I feel like this gives you the idea. And I'm putting the tulips in the center to just give a little bit of vertical interest through that negative space. And she's so pretty. This could be a theme right here. And this is all the stuff that looks good together because just you wait, we're gonna move on to my second one. This is just a page for the next one rather than a full spread. This one is a bunch of sheets of scratch art paper, which is this really fun black coated rainbow backed paper where you use these little bamboo stick things to scrape off the black to reveal the mysterious rainbow paper that is underneath. The only way these could be cooler is if they were a foil rainbow backing rather than just matte. Matte is also fine, but I had such a good time just doodling around the outside edges here. This could be a cool title page if you just do some scratch art around the sides and then you could stick some lettering or you could scratch some lettering in the middle. I'm doing this kind of frame thing just because I was having a really good time, but I am actually going to tear this up in a minute. Not because I hate it or anything, just because I didn't want it to be the only thing that would fit on a page. So, you know, and also as you're doing this, it leaves these little scratchies as you're removing the black, obviously it has to go somewhere. So it leaves these little, it's almost like eraser crumbs, you know, which are now all over my filming backdrop. So that's always fun, whoops. So I'm tearing that into three. This wide washi tape, this I actually do think is a wide washi tape. Look at that width. I've seen Icy from Icy Studios use this in her journal and I just thought it was so pretty. So I also wanted world map washi tape. Incredibly fun vintage vibes with the color and the type faces and stuff that they've used. I just think it's really nice. So that's going to be my first layer. I'm going to do two rows of that on the left page, just leaving a little gap in the middle so I can add some lettering there later on. You'll see and stick in some glue tape on the back of these scratch art torn bits so that I can stick those in. They're a little bit on the thicker side, obviously, because there's two layers of stuff going on there. So they will bulk up your journal just a little bit, but it's not too bad. I hadn't realized quite how vivid the rainbow of the underlayer of the scratch art paper was going to be, so I thought I'd better bring some more colors in with a little bit of that washi tape again. And none of those colors was what I wanted to letter with in the watercolor set, so I'm mixing a bunch of them together to make this kind of beige, brown, gold sort of thing. It still has the sheen. I think it's pretty good. And I couldn't think of anything to letter, so we're just going to go with Station Repel since that is the theme of this video. I freaking love lettering with watercolor and these tiny brushes. I don't know why I don't ever do it in my journal because it's so much fun. Maybe I should. Do you think I should? Let me know if you think I should do more lettering with watercolors and these brushes. Look, is it the most cohesive journal page I've ever made? No, absolutely not. But I think it demonstrates the stuff pretty well. So that's all I needed it to do. And I'm just going to add some little flowers too, because why the heck not? use some different colors. Let's go. Definitely much more impressed with the purple, green, blue spread than the leftovers <laughs> spread. Um, hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. Moving on to the stuff that doesn't always go in a journal, although this is an item that probably could. I got one of these last time from my last station repel haul as well. It's a watercolor paper pad, 300 GSM this time. I think the one I got last time was 200. So this is going to be able to take a lot more water. I'm learning and practicing with watercolor and I am enjoying the process, but also I find that having really small watercolor paper sort of takes the pressure off a little bit because I'm like, I don't want to waste good watercolor paper while I'm learning, but at the same time, like you have to learn on something and bullet journal paper isn't made for that. So I have this little guy. They say it's hot press. I still don't really understand the differences between different types of watercolor paper, but if you know that and you care about it, it's hot press, apparently. Definitely one of the pricier items for this haul. This one goes for $18.19, but I think that's to be expected for watercolor paper if you want it to be good. This is an eraser, which isn't that exciting, I know, but it's, it's kind of exciting because it's a 
Some people call it a kneadable eraser or a kneaded eraser or a putty eraser. It's an eraser for very fancy artists. It's, it's squishy, right? You can make it whatever shape you need it to be so you can get into really fine areas and you can use it a few different ways. So if you just dab it down on the page, it can pick up some of whatever pencil graphite stuff that you've got on the page, but not necessarily all of it if you need to lighten a section. I use pencil to plan out my journal before I go in and ink everything, if that makes sense. And so I use a lot of eraser. Normal erasers also fine, but you know how they make those little crumbs? They make those like rolly gross bits as you're erasing. And then you have to like move that all off your piece of paper while you're going out of your journal or whatever. And if you're filming, they get all around your filming setup, which is kind of gross in my humble opinion. So these don't do that. $1.20 for the kneadable eraser. So good to have if you do lots of pencil stuff. I guess this is somewhat stationary adjacent, so we'll talk about this guy next. This is just double-sided clear tape. I don't know how I intend to use this. I just thought like maybe that'd be good to have, I don't know. I sometimes see people use this kind of stuff, they cut off a little square of it and they use it to stick things onto scrapbooky, junk journaly pages and it like elevates them off the page a little bit so they have a little shadow behind. I don't want to do that in my journal. That's going to make your journal really thick and I don't like that. But if I was going to do it just on a separate piece of paper, that could be cool. So now I have the option, at least. You get a meter of the stuff. It's quite wide so I don't think I'd be needing it. I'd be cutting it down quite a bit to get enough to just do that little kind of paper project. The website says it's transparent and flexible qualities can be used widely in daily life and compared to normal tapes, it stands out with two excellent characteristics. It can even retain objects on a smooth surface. Also without drilling, using nails or leaving markings. I suppose you're supposed to use it on your walls and it was $1.41. Okay, so not stationary, but handy to have in life. <laughs> They're stationary adjacent. They're good things to have in places where you do homework or study or work because who doesn't have cables to wrangle? These are cable ties and this is actually two packets of them that I just mixed together for convenience. I got them in white and pink. They're silicon so they're like stretchy and strong. You just wrap the tie around whatever cable and then you can press the little knobby bit through the hole and then it will stay wrapped around your cable and then you can have cable management and organization which is always a wonderful thing. Also my cat loves chasing these. They're like his favorite toy. They come in a little pack of four, which is pretty handy. They are 71 cents for a pack. And I think they also have a couple of other colors. Let me confirm that. Yes, there are four colors. They also come in khaki and mint green. Although the mint green looks kind of aqua blue to me and the khaki is kind of like a brownie beige. And I'm very excited to start using these now because I have so many cables in my life and they drive me crazy. The next two items are not stationary. Just want to throw that out there. They are things that you place on your person. So we're talking now in the realm of jewelry and hair accessories. Why not? I'm a girly girl. I like these kinds of things. Let's start with this because it's super pretty. This is a bracelet. Isn't it lovely? It's a lovely delicate gold chain. It's got a couple of different chains going on here. Little stars with diamante details and some pearls. I just think it's super pretty and delicate. Also, super freaking cheap. It is $4.21 for this little star pearl bracelet. It comes in this fun little like shrink wrap box. The sides of it are, oh, what a good sound, plastic. So when you place the piece of jewelry in here and you close it, it kind of like seals it in place and then it can't get tangled as it like, as you go around your life. So I think I'm gonna keep the box and use it the next time I travel if I wanna take jewelry with me. It's a nice gold. I like that it's not super duper yellow. Sometimes when you get very affordable jewelry, it can be kind of cheap looking. I don't think it looks super cheap. I don't know that the gold would last if you wore it every day. It would probably rub off after a while. I'm actually a silver girl. I prefer silver jewelry over gold, but I just think this is too pretty. And sometimes I do want to wear gold if I think it works better with an outfit. So I'm excited to wear this. I'm going to the ballet next week. So I think I might wear it for that. That'd be cute. Also, I'm probably gonna do a celestial bullet journal theme soon. So I thought I would wear it for the video because that'd be fun. Cause you see my hands and my wrists a lot, right? In plan with me videos, so just thought I'd jazz it up a little bit for you. And this one is a hair claw. I can't even tell you how excited I am that these came back into style because I was around for the first iteration of hair claws in the 90s. They are the most convenient way to put your hair up quickly. Just gonna... Thoughts, feelings? I like it. I like it. They have other colors of this too. So they have some cute like gold ones with teddy bears on or flowers or bows and stuff. They've got 
I think this is the minimalist pink one, but they also have it in white and blue and they have, they actually honestly have a lot of little like even butterfly clip type clips. I just think it's really nice. Should I just wear it for the rest of the video? You won't be able to see it because it's behind my head, but I think I'm gonna do it anyway. <laughs> Did I tell you how much this was? It was $1.64. That's better than you can buy in the shops in Brisbane. My 90s dreams return to me. <laughs> of course, it wouldn't be a stationary pal video without the freebies. This is my fourth Station Repel box of goodies. So I'm kind of at a point where I'm like, Station Repel freebies exhaustion. I sort of wish they wouldn't send me freebies, but there are a couple that I don't mind. So Teddy, I know he's like their signature. I could live without him. I don't need four Station Repel Teddies. I give them to Mitsu and he chases them. I thought he would rip them apart. He has not yet. Um, so that's good, I guess. These, I don't know what to do with. I think maybe you're supposed to like, put it on the end of your pen and it's cute or whatever. They say love on them. I don't, I've got so many of these now. I'm like, I don't know what to do with them. I truly don't. And I don't have anyone in my life who would like them. So what do you do with that? What do you do with that? Little phone pop socket thing. I don't want it. <laughs> it's got a popsicle on it, which is cute, I admit, but I don't want it. Rubber ducky. He does squeak. I will take endless rubber duckies. Thank you. I'm totally okay with this. I love baths. And this guy I think is really adorable. He's a little spaceman. Key ring. He's really cute. And I have a friend who's really into space. I think she would really like him. So I probably won't keep this guy. I'm not really a key rings girly. It's not really, I don't do, I don't do dangly things. So I think this will be a good little gifty. I'll pass him on. I'll find him a new home. Is that all of it? Oh no, it's not all of it. I didn't dig hard enough. There's another little Sanrio type paperclip. I don't want that either. It's too cutesy for me, but my friend Lucy is really into the Sanrio characters. Um, she's about to go to Japan. So does she need me to give her this kind of thing? No, no, of course she doesn't, but I'll give it to her when she gets back. That is everything from my Station Repel haul this time around. If you wanna know more about their shipping costs and delivery times and stuff like that, all that info is on their website. So you can jump on and have a look. Once again, I have a discount code for you, which is simply my name, Erin, E-R-I-N, to get you 15% off your Station Repel order, whether it's during the sale or not, you can use that whenever you like. I'm gonna skedaddle now and let you get back to whatever you were doing before you clicked on this video. Thank you for clicking on this video. If you'd like to see more from me and you're not already part of my little YouTube family, you can hit subscribe and we can hang out some more. I'm on Instagram as well, at erinsmith.art, if you'd like to follow me along there. And we can hang out some more over there too. That'd be great. Have a look through the channel if you'd like to watch some more. YouTube will suggest you some stuff over here at the end of the video in case you'd like to just click on one of them. I'll have another video for you next Friday evening, Australian time. Until then, I hope you have a wonderful week. Stay safe. I can't wait to see you again soon. Bye.